Huh. I guess it would have made more sense thematically to go on the hiatus during the time skip, and not just review one map post time skip. Oops. Part 2 Verdant Wind Guardian Moon The Alliance Leader's Ambitions Today's map feels like it wants to let the players play offensively or defensively, which is always good to give options to the player. Yet, this map is not tailored for defensive play. It is way too easy. Enemies only approach from the bottom, when standard defensive chapters normally have enemies coming from three or four different directions. This forces you as the player to spread your units out to avoid a clusterfuck. It adds a layer to the planning phase and requires you to play more on the fly dealing with each group of your units. But having everyone together defending one direction reflects the bait and kill turtling strategy that is always already too common in this game. There are also only two choke points that the enemy can walk through, and they also refuse to ever break down any of the structures. Completing the side objective is admittedly cool, given that you only have three units to use. The green unit moves like the perfect speed for you to clear out the area for him. It's slow enough to not make you feel rushed, but it is fast enough to make you feel like you are on a timer. However, the reward of shutting down half of the map is far too great. All these things heavily skew playing defensive in the player's favor, with the only sacrifice really being experience, something easily alleviated in three houses. But on the other hand, playing offensively, pushing through and routing all the enemies is a much more satisfying experience. You have to make your way through the town area, which is full of tight corridors due to the fences, that you can choose to break apart and open up as much as you like. Once you push through the town, you are in a large scale scrimmage that is like, oh my goodness, how many guys are there? How many gambits do I gotta use? The entire time you are bombarded by the infinite Pegasus reinforcements, which are some of the deadliest units in the game. Also, I just want to make note that this may be the best use of ambush reinforcements in all of Fire Emblem. You know where they're going to spawn. It's consistent. But it's also so far away that they can never surprise you for an unfair kill. Yet at the same time, you always have to respect them, since it's made out of some of the strongest physically offensive units in the game, and they will always make the first move. You have to push through and time out each of your moves to make sure you clear the boss and his goons without getting killed by the ambush. It was a lot more fun than just sitting back and letting the map play itself. So how do I rate this? I love playing it one way, and I hate it the other. It's nice that it gives you options, but it still feels skewed towards just playing the easy way. Seven out of ten. I think having the option makes it all right, and I like the idea of what it was going for. Having strategies in war that isn't just battling, it's about sneaking around and sabotaging. It reminds me of that chapter in Radiant Dawn where you're burning down the supplies to stop the enemy march. It just had that fun war vibe to it, you know? I liked it.